Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas Pro 17 tutorial for you. In this episode, we're going to be going over Vegas Pro 17's brand new planar motion tracking. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to roll a clip of what it is right here. And if you want to learn how to do that, stick around. Just a heads up, this video is sponsored by Click Rising, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So planar motion tracking, very, very summed up in a basic version, is a very high-tech way of motion tracking. It doesn't just track one point across the screen in X and Y value, it tracks multiple points and solves camera movements and basically assumes what your video is putting out, foreground, background, and basically creates almost like a 3D plane for your tracking points to go over. So it's like when you want to put billboards on the walls and things like that, and it can track things off the screen, it can track things back on, and it can just make things bigger and smaller automatically. Planar motion tracking is awesome, and usually when people hear planar motion tracking, they're thinking Mocha or Boris's Mocha Pro. That has a really awesome, really good planar motion tracker that movies use, you know, like Avengers and things like that. So Vegas wanted to dip their feet in the water, and they made their own planar motion tracking. And their planar motion tracking is okay. It's not necessarily the same thing as Mocha's motion tracking. So it, in turn, doesn't necessarily solve the camera and create a 3D plane or scape for your track points to move throughout its space in a very accurate movement. It tries to planar motion track on a 2D plane, only using whichever shape you draw, and then tries to solve the camera movement as best as possible. And I honestly haven't had too many good results with it just yet. But through a lot of searching and some scripting, another YouTuber came up with some code that he wrote for the program, and that actually makes this planar motion tracking a lot better and look a lot better, just like you saw in the video in the beginning. So in Vegas, I have a video I took of a whiteboard, and it's in front of me, and I walk, and it ends up becoming almost exactly sideways. So in actual planar motion tracking, it'll know that this is a square, and as we move, it'll know that the right side's shrinking, and the left side's growing and moving at the same time. So to do this in Vegas, it is a process. Let's go through this together. You have to go over to Video Effects, and then go to your Bezier Masking, and then drag it onto your clip. From here, it'll bring open the Bezier Masking window. And let's drop down General Options, and then Blend, and let's bring that all the way up to 1. Minimize General Options, let's go to Mask 1. We're only going to be utilizing Mask 1 for this. So what we want to do is make this shape. So it's almost a perfect rectangle. So what I'm going to do is just drag it and have the white dots kind of close as close as I possibly can to the corners. We could click and drag the yellow ones and that will bring them wider. But if you wanted, you can also go over to the type and then change to curve and that'll allow you to draw a mask. So what we want to do is we can draw this mask from the inside of here to there to there to there and then complete it here. Now we got our shape. And I want this shape to keep its shape from the inside of this whiteboard as we move the camera. So then go over here to edit mode and uncheck it and you are out of the shape drawing tool. Scroll down to the bottom, we we'll go to tracking, open the options, and then precision, I always put mine at high. If I keep it on normal, it usually loses the track. So I'm gonna keep it on high and then mode, we're gonna go down to shape and location. Keyframe interval, this is basically how many keyframes you want it to look for this, and I like to have mine as accurate as possible, so I drop it to one, and so every single keyframe is gonna be looking for that exact shape. This usually makes the track a lot more accurate and not fail as much. So once you're done with that, make sure your marker's at the beginning of your clip on the timeline, and then go ahead and hit start. I'm fast forwarding through all this for you guys because it's tracking every single frame, and this is a 60 frame per second shot, and it has finished tracking. I'm going to keep the effect open and then move to the side. If we go down here to the bottom, we can do lock cursor to media timeline, and this matches up the cursor from this timeline to this timeline. So if we right click and drag this, we can control the speed of how we want to go with this. It looks like it's doing a pretty good job keeping the square. It looks like it lost it a little bit to the side there, but we are looking, you know, not, not too bad. It's definitely off right now. Keep it going, and that's where it ends. Okay, so to test what this looks like and how to line this up, Let's go ahead and drag a picture on here. We can close this, 
Let me drag a picture over here. Make sure it's the same length as your clip. Go down to the picture in picture, the Vegas is built in picture in picture, and drag it onto your picture. Make sure it's above your source footage. Now in here, what we wanna do is go down to mode and we wanna do free form. This allows us to change individual points on this picture. Once we have done that, then we can close this, select this clip, hold control, select your picture, go up to tools, scroll down to extensions, and then we're gonna do copy motion track to pip. Done copying from mask one, select okay. So now it is done. That is their planar motion tracking. So let's see how it looks. I'm gonna play this in half speed so we can see it. There we go. It doesn't look like it's doing too well. It's kind of flipping it in. Yeah, look at that. It's not, not doing too bad. Really, really shrunk it. And now it's, it's gone. That's, <laughs> that is a completely closed picture. And that's done. So that looks like it's that way for the rest of the film. So that's it. That's Vegas's planar motion tracking. It is very tedious to use. But a really awesome YouTuber named Dust Voice, I'm going to link his information in the description below, he wrote a few scripts, a couple scripts, to make this planar motion tracking a lot easier. So we're going to go through that together. And now here's a brief overview of this awesome app named Clio. If you have trouble managing your money and can benefit from somebody telling you how to properly spend it and where to strategically save it, you can try Clio for free. Can I really afford the RTX 2080 Ti? Clio can tell you if that's a good idea, or if you should save what you got. How much have I spent on Starbucks this year? Clio would gladly tell you you need to calm down on buying that overpriced coffee. It's safe, secure, trusted by millions, and it's free. And if you try out Clio and happen to really like it, you can upgrade to its subscription service. It includes a ton of features like overdraft protection and stuff like that. So try out Clio for free in the description below and start managing your money better. So we saw how Vegas's planar motion tracking work, but this YouTuber called Dust Voice, he wrote a few scripts for Vegas that allow planar motion tracking to look a lot better. And it may not be considered technically planar motion tracking at this point, but it provides the same result planar motion tracking gives you, but in a very accurate portion. Now this script does only work for certain things. You may get some errors because it is a third party script, but I'm going to leave a link in the description below to Dust Voice's channel and all the scripts that he wrote. So let's jump back into Vegas and show you. Okay, so first things first is delete the effect from your clip and delete the picture itself or just remove the effect from that picture. Then bring your cursor to the beginning of the timeline. Go ahead and drag and drop the square picture in picture on top of this video. We can go over to general options and turn the blend up to one so we can see the background. And then we want to hit the pan and crop tool and we're going to zoom in to one of these corners really, really far and then drag it over. We're going to do the top left to start it off. Once you're done with that, go back to Bezier masking and then drop down mask one. Now from here, position the mask to it's right around the border of this blue square. And once you got it really close, go up to tools, go down to scripting, and then we're going to click precise adjust mask, which is Dust Voice's script. It's going to prompt open a box saying which mask would you like to copy from. You tell it mask one because that's the one we just did. Hit done. And this box is basically saying it's going to reset the crop size of the video, but your mask is going to stay that small that you've made it surrounding the specific part in the video. Hit yes. And then it's going to say move your cursor and bring it back to see the result. So let's move our cursor and then we bring it back to the first frame. And now our mask is still right there exactly around that blue square that where we want it. Next, we're going to go over to tracking, drop that down, then drop down options, choose precision and then choose high. So it's really accurate and then drop down mask and we're going to choose location. After that, make sure your keyframe interval is one. And once you've dropped it down, hit start. Once it's finished tracking, go to the bottom left and make sure your lock cursor to timeline is on. This is going to match up your cursor from your effects to your timeline. And let's see how this mask looks. And it looks like it's really, really accurate staying on that square. Even though the video is lagging a bit while I'm dragging, it is very, very accurate. And then it loses the mask a little bit right there. So towards the end, once you can't see the blue square anymore, the mask will get lost. You can manually track this if you wanted, or you can just trim the clip back to where it finished the track for time saving purposes. And now that we've successfully completed mask one, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this three more times for the top right corner, for the bottom left corner, and then for the bottom right corner. So let's go over to mask one and uncheck the enable box. And from there, go to mask two, and then we're going to check the enable box and then repeat the same thing. We're going to take the pan and crop tool, zoom way far into the top right corner. Once you've done that, adjust your mask to where it's right around the blue square. Make sure your cursor is at the first position, select your clip go to tools, go to scripting, go to precise adjust mask, 
and then select which mask you want to copy the information from. We're doing mask two, so hit done and then hit yes. That's going to unzoom it, hit okay, move your cursor, bring it back. And then you now have the precise mask on mask two. Again, go down to tracking, choose high, make sure it's on location, keyframe interval one, hit start. Once it's finished again, you can either manually track this yourself or just trim the clip back to where the mask is successfully done. Then we're going to go ahead and repeat that for mask three and four. And so once you've completed the fourth mask, we're going to go over to the Bezier masking and then drop down mask three, enable it, go drop down mask two, enable it, drop down mask one and enable it. So go ahead and drag and drop your picture on here now. Extend that picture to the same size of your clip and then go over to the effects and drag picture and picture onto it. Now in the picture and picture settings, you got to make sure that your mode is selected and goes down to freeform. So next, make sure you click and select the video clip and then click and select your picture. Go up to tools, scripting. And then we're going to select copy mask to pick corner. First, you'll get a prompt box saying which mask do you want to copy? You're going to say mask one, which is your top left corner. Hit done. And then it's going to say, where do you want to copy it to? We're going to say the top left corner and hit done. It says, do you want to do another mask? We say yes. Mask two to the top right corner. Do you want to do another mask? Yes. Mask three to the bottom left corner. Do you want to do a fourth mask? Yes. Mask four to the bottom right corner. This warning is saying that it's gonna be copying the information from your current cursor onward. So make sure your cursor is at the beginning of your clip where you started your mask, then hit yes. And now all four corners of your picture in picture are tracked to all four of those points that you made on your Bezier mask. And it looks amazing. Here's another higher quality example of everything. The original and then the tracked. And there it is. That is Vegas's planar motion tracking in action. So the built-in planar motion tracking that Vegas has isn't the best. You know, it works for a little bit, but you're going to have to adjust a lot of things for it to be perfect. Now, again, you could not do this in Vegas 16 because they didn't have the ability to adjust each corner of your picture in picture. So this is a Vegas 17 only thing. And Vegas 17 now technically does have planar motion tracking, but just it's a lot easier with the scripts. So don't forget to try out Clio in the description below. And then that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you liked it. Maybe shoot a like down there and then maybe a subscribe down there as well because I got a lot of other Vegas Pro videos and tutorials on my channel, Scrapyard Films. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.